This is part two of our carport makeover. If you didn't see the first part, I cladded the steel posts and beams with wood just to try and dress it up a bit. I'll start with the one piece that covered up the conduits on the post. That didn't get fixed with screws in the last video, so I'm doing that now. And after doing that, it seemed so much more secure than the ones that I just glued and nailed. So I decided to go back over all the nail joints and add screws. These boards will definitely shrink as the treated pine isn't seasoned and it's still a little bit wet. There's every chance that they'll cup a little too, but adding these screws will definitely help. And adding a few more screws here and there in the future if it starts to cup again isn't a big problem and it's easy enough to fix. There's already gaps there now as the boards are rough sawn and irregular, some are a little thicker than others and the edges aren't straight. So it's never going to look like a solid post at close scrutiny. It is what it is, but I reckon even with a few gaps here and there, it's still a big improvement over the original structure. I've just bought a plank which would have helped when cladding the beams. I've been meaning to get one for a while for when I'm trimming the hedges. Anyway, I'll get started with the sanding and I'll do that with an orbital sander and a 40 grit disc. I'm not doing heaps of sanding, just taking the tops off and not trying to lose the texture. Next I'll clean the posts and beams and prepare them for finish. When treated pine is fresh it doesn't take a finish well at all. It can be mouldy and grimy so it's best to prepare it properly and I'm doing that with deck wash. It needs wetting down first as well as any nearby plants to help protect them and then I'll spray on the solution and leave it to do its thing for 20 minutes. and giving it a scrub with a brush can help work the solution into the wood. After 20 minutes, the deck cleaner needs washing off and then leaving to dry. While it's drying, I'll head over to the workshop and make a cover for the junction box that was left exposed in the last video. Next I'll fill all of the screw holes. I'm using an exterior filler that dries like pine and can take a stain, which is what we're going to use for the finish. Before I start staining the wood, I'm going over it again with a sander and this time I'm using a 120 grit disc. I'm using a stain that's made for cladding and it's supposed to reduce the chance of the wood cupping. I bought the weather grey finish but thought that the colour was too light so I darkened it with some black. We weren't sure whether to paint the wood to match the posts on the house or to stain them. We compromised and decided rather than stain it a natural wood colour, we'd stain it with a similar colour to the house posts and both Kath and I are very happy with it. I let it dry for an hour or so before recoating it, but with this product you can actually go straight back over it. That's the wood finish, so now I'll start making the mesh panels that go around the fascia. These will give the jasmine something hopefully to grow around and we'll have a living green border all the way around the top. The jasmine has been neglected and it's a wonder that it's even still alive, but Kath is giving it some attention with some fresh soil and feeding it up. I made the concrete planter and screen years ago and while the jasmine has survived it hasn't thrived either. What I have done is broken some decent sized holes about a foot or so apart in the bottom of the planter to let the roots grow down into the ground and hopefully that helps. I'm making the frame of the panels from one inch galvanized box section and I'll start by cutting the pieces to length. 
I mentioned these new weld clamps in my last video. They're extremely strong and all steel constructed. If you're in Australia and you're looking to buy some awesome clamps, you can get a 15% discount with the code PASCMAKES and I'll put a link in the description. Because I'm welding galvanized steel, I'll do that with flux core wire, which works much better than using gas. That's why I still have my old cheap welder just to run as gasless. I've just given it an upgrade with a new earth clamp, which I reckon is probably the best thing you can do with a cheap welder, and I probably should have done it years ago. This is the first real fabrication project that I've used my welding table for. And now that I've started using it, I couldn't imagine working without it. I really am super happy with how it turned out. The frame isn't square, it's tapered from one end to the other and that's to allow for the fall of the roof on the carport. That's the first frame pretty well done. I just need to add a couple of diagonals to give it more strength. And then when it's fitted to the post, it will add strength to those and make the whole carport sturdier. Now that the frame's done with the diagonals, I'll add the galvanized mesh for the jasmine to grow onto. Next I'll drill holes for mounting it to the post, but before I do that I'll spray all the joints with zinc primer. Because of the diagonals in the frame I won't be able to get a drill in for the bottom hole, so I'm pre-drilling those ones first. And again, because of the diagonals, I can't get a driver in, so I'm putting the bottom screws in with a spanner. I've got a whole container of these reclaimed screws that someone gave me. They are wood screws, but by pre-drilling the metal post underneath the cladding with a slightly smaller size drill bit than the threads of the screws, the threads make a strong fixing, just the same as a metal fixing screw. You just have to pre-drill first. I've done this heaps of times, especially around my workshop, and it works perfectly and I can just about get the driver in to screw in the top two holes.
that's the first one done and off camera I made the rest of them and because I don't want to bore you too much I'll run through the installation of those pretty quickly. Some of you may think it's a bad idea to reduce the height at the front by adding those panels, but the roof of the carport is way higher than my truck and anything I'll ever put on top of it. I have heaps of room to play with. In fact, one of the reasons for doing this is because it looked too high in the first place and this brings it down a little and I think it looks much better. It may look a little cold at the moment, even though I like it, but you have to try and imagine it with the jasmine growing around. And when that happens, it'll soften it and it will look much more pleasing. Kathy's given the jasmine a helping hand and next I'll fix the downpipe back on. It's really starting to come together now, especially with a bit of paint around the top. And if anyone's interested, the color of the paint is woodland gray. Now onto the biggest eyesore of all, the grating over the gutter. Ever since we've lived here, I've wanted to do something about it and it's finally happening. It's extremely heavy and far too heavy for me to lift on my own. I need to salvage the angle iron that runs down each side anyway, so I'll start breaking it down where it is. It's difficult to see where all the welds are, so I am forcing it apart in places as well as cutting through the more obvious welds. It may seem like a lot of work, but I need to break up the panels into manageable size pieces anyway, and galvanized angle isn't cheap. These pieces here would have cost a few hundred dollars. I finished breaking the rest down off camera and I can tell you it was a lot of work, not much fun at all. Now I just need to clean up these pieces of angle. That's all the pieces of steel hanging on removed. Now I need to grind off the welds too. I'm spraying with zinc cold gel again onto any of the bare metal and I also removed these pieces from the ends of the angle off camera. Now I need to clean all the years of silt out of the gutter and give it a good clean. I also spent a bit of time cleaning up this section of the dry creek bed. I removed all the stones, cleaned out the silt and then washed the stones before replacing them. Now I need to do the rest of the dry creek bed but I have no idea when I'll find the time to do that. Next I'll try and fix up the one concrete edge that's crumbled away. I'm not sure how effective this will be but I'll apply a bonding agent first to give it a chance. It's certainly not going to be the best fix and it's a little bit bodgy. I'm not confident it'll work, but I thought I should give it a try. I don't want to change the height, but just fix up the corner. I trailed it a bit too high because of the aggregate in it, so I dragged some out and then just brushed the top instead. It isn't the neatest, but I may try and do something with it later on.
I'll fix the angle to the sidewalls of the gutter with screws. So next I'll drill the mounting holes. I use three different drill sizes to get to the final size. And when the angle is fixed, I'll be sitting wooden sleepers on top of those. After the reclaimed angle is fixed to the sides, I'll then weld on a new angle that will cover the concrete edges. Here I'm adjusting the height so it sits correctly. I'm using Tapcon screws that can hold 450 kilograms each and these are all into the original concrete and not into my fix that was along the edge. I reckon with the new angle hanging on the top of the concrete and the old angle fixed with the screws together they should be strong enough to drive over. I fitted the other side off camera, but I needed to remove a few of the screws and put packers behind as the concrete is wavy and all over the place. There's some sad news to share with you. My trusted cheap welder that's done heaps of projects, many of them in my videos, has finally died and it will arc no more. It was a cheap one, but got the job done and has paid for itself many times over. But good news, I got a chance to buy a new welder. This is a great little welder and if you're looking to get into welding then something like this would be the go. It's not sponsored at all, I bought it myself but I really do like it. To give it even more strength, I'm adding some stretches. These don't hold any downward force, they just keep the two rails securely up against the walls. I reckon it will be strong enough, but if it isn't, I could add some legs underneath. That would be something for debris to catch on to, so I'll only do that if needed later on. Now onto the wooden sleepers that will cover the top of the gutter. These are very heavy and dense hardwood and will be plenty strong enough to drive over.
I reckon that's looking pretty good. I've got these thinner pieces that I cut off camera and I'll fix those to either end of the gutter. I've got three drills and a driver set up ready to go. The first one pre-drills all the way through the wood and the metal. The next one widens the hole in just the wood for the screw to pass through. And the third drill is for countersinking and I'm using batten screws to fix the sleepers down. We won't be coating the sleepers as no finish works well on exposed timbers that are lying flat in our weather conditions anyway, so I'll let it weather and go grey, which I like anyway. If I were to use anything, I'd use decking oil, but that would need reapplying at least twice a year, and it quickly gets to the point where it gets oversaturated and it becomes soft and sticky. Like I said, there isn't a product that is an ideal solution. There's one last thing to do to complete the video. I have to make a permanent cover for these conduits and I'll do that with this piece of stone. The conduits are fairly new and I promised the electrician I'd cover them up, so I'm doing that now. It's just so there's no chance they could be hit with a mower or anything else that could damage them. I'll use this paver to place the stone on top of. I just need to shape it to fit just inside the edge of the stone. I'm not sure quite how this will look, but I have to put something over the conduits and this seemed like a decent option and we'll be putting plants on top of it too. I put some mortar around the base. I wouldn't say I did a great job of it, but it'll do. And I also covered the concrete at the front of the gutter with some of the leftover mortar. Every now and then we get a trailer full of gravel just to freshen the driveway up a bit. And it seemed to be a good time to do that now. I also painted the end wall of the house with a new colour, but we're not super happy with it, so we will repaint it along with the rest of the house. That's the project just about complete. There's still some landscaping to do between the lawn and the concrete, and I think I'm going to have a crack at spray creating the concrete too. I reckon it's made a huge difference, as you can see in a couple of these before and after shots. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.